This is Minecraft. Released on November 18, 2011, it quickly became a global phenomenon, played by millions of players every single day. And to my right is the Blockheads. Having a similar blocky texture and a similar sandbox playstyle, it received high praise in reviews and garnered a small community of its own. If you ever wanted to play a 2D version of Minecraft, play Terraria. Both of these sandbox games share the same goals. You mine and collect resources with the tools you have. And then you use those resources to craft whatever you need to survive. You build shelter, you find monsters, you get better gear and better equipment. But ultimately, you are free to do whatever you want. However, despite all their similarities, they have very polarizing differences. One of these is vastly more popular, one of these is still getting updates, one of these has multiple ports, and there's a reason why one of these is called a Minecraft clone. But in the seas and mountains of elves, Blockheads has themselves one major W over Minecraft. Copper. In one game, copper is one of the best resources despite being extremely common and being found very early on. Whereas in the other, copper is, well... An absolute joke. <laughs> My name is Zaylorenz, and today we're gonna find out how a Minecraft clone implemented copper to his game better than the game it directly took inspiration from. Let's get into it. If you've watched my video as to why diamonds aren't special anymore, you left the video with one key takeaway. Recipes are king. Recipes are what made iron a valuable resource because it's used in almost everything. Recipes are what separates the gold you can never have enough of from the lapis lazulis that just take up storage space doing absolutely nothing. And copper is no exception to this rule. If copper wants to be highly valued by players, it needs to have lots of good recipes that directly benefit them. The blockheads know this, and that's exactly what they did. Copper is combined with tin to make bronze in real life? Let's add bronze to the game and make copper and tin the recipes, giving players a set of tools and equipment in the early game before they upgrade to iron. Copper is used in pennies? Let's add a recipe for copper coins. Copper is a resource that directly affects the economy of the game. Yes, blockheads as a trading system. I'm sure there's a crypto or NFT joke to make here, but it's too easy, so I'm not going to. Copper is used in electrical components? Let's give copper recipes for electrical components. Copper wires, copper boilers, steam generators, flywheels. It is time for an industrial revolution. And copper will be the one leading the charge. Copper is literally one of the most useful metals in real life. And by God, Blockheads was going to make sure that this is reflected in the game. Now let's compare that to Minecraft. I think the problem speaks for itself. Let's have a bit of viewer participation, okay? I want you to name me every copper recipe. You've either recited every copper recipe instantly, or you're panicking in absolute shambles, struggling to remember what copper is even used for. So let me help you with that. This is my hand. Say hi, hand. Hi. Copper has so little uses, I can count all of them with my fingers. Copper is used for spyglasses, lightning rods, and copper blocks. Three. King Tree. Copper is used for a feature you get by downloading Optifine, a dildo shaped anti measure for weather that occurs, uh, how often? Oh, yeah, less than 2% of the time every 9 hours on average. And a block that, maybe a hot take, looks like absolute shit. No, I'm not gonna take this slander anymore. Copper is a beautiful block and you can't convince me otherwise. Bro, oh, copper looks so ugly. Ugly. You just called copper blocks ugly when diorite has been in the game for nine fucking years. Look at this shit, okay? Look how ugly this shit is. This uh, look, this looks like actual bird shit, okay? And I really like this how it's it's okay. Don't you look at how Hit like if you agree that copper blocks look awful. And also hit like if you disagree. Just hit the like button on the video if you're enjoying it so far. But that is just one piece of the puzzle. Which brings me on to the second point. Phases. Progression is an important key element in any game. If I play a game for a while, I expect something to be different. My character gets stronger, my enemies get tougher. I should be playing TUTK. In sandbox games, the progression system is in the resources. Some resources excel in the early, some in the mid, and some are used exclusively in late. But even with this, you never want to feel as though the early game resources are completely useless past a certain point. If I had the choice between iron or diamond tools, I'd take diamonds in a heartbeat. But at no point in my survival world will I ever think that iron is useless and I shouldn't mine it if I saw it in a cave. 
Iron is what every early or mid game resource should strive to be. Heavily used in early to mid, slowly gets replaced by better resources, but still remains important as the game progresses. Now, I want you to let me know something. In which phase of the game are you supposed to use copper? The early, the mid, or the late? It's a trick question. Copper is barely even usable as a resource. This is me before finding copper. And this is me after finding copper. Whoa! You never use it at any phase of the game. Not even its intended early phase. By late game, the scum of a resource isn't even worth the durability of your efficiency 5 fortune tree unbreakable tree mending netherite pickaxe. Two. Can you guess which phase of the game that copper is used in blockheads? The answer is yes. Copper is used for bronze in the early game. A nice little transition between stone tools and iron tools. In the mid game, copper is obsolete because bronze has been replaced by iron and steel tools. But find themselves a decent spot with copper coins. The copper you mine can be turned into currency, which you can then use to buy other resources that- Wait, this is just money laundering. <laughs> And in the late game, with steam generators, wires, trains, and elevators, electricity is no longer the future. It is here and it is now. Copper resurges and finds itself comfortable alongside mid to late game resources. In Minecraft, copper is a shit brown stain on Mojang's resume, a failed feature that will be memed for years to come. Whereas in Blockheads, copper belongs in the museum, the perfect puzzle piece to the conundrum that is progression. And best of all, it did all of this effortlessly because it had one major unfair advantage over its Minecraft counterpart. History. Copper has existed from the very start in Blockheads, since the game's release to its most recent version today, whereas Minecraft's Copper had the unfortunate timing of being released late in 1.17. You see, when a resource gets added to the game, we as the player will instinctively compare it to other existing resources. On 23rd of June 2020, when the Nether update added Netherite, Mojang added them all the way to the right, as a tier above Diamond. And this was a smart decision. We as the player would compare Netherite to every existing resource, and Netherite would always pass the vibe check. As such, Netherite would be welcomed with open arms into the family of resources. Say hi to Grandpa Diamond who talks about how back in his day, he was the best resource. Grandson Iron who keeps calling Grandpa Diamond an old fart boomer, and Racy's uncle Lapis Lazuli who appears every Christmas dinner to give you a book you don't need. In Blockheads, with everything listed so far, new resources have very stiff competition, which is why they did the smart move of only adding new resources to the late game. Any changes to early and mid will be done by adding new recipes to already existing resources. Now in Minecraft, however, Ha, huh, you thought I was going to use the fart sound effect? Copper is the one that's getting judged. Copper went from potentially suplexing new resources into an early retirement, into putting its own ass in a retirement home. It also had the most unfortunate experience of being added to the early game, right before iron. With new late game features, there is some leeway. Even if they are underwhelming, love them or hate them, they are still the best of the best. Whereas newer early game features are easily neglected and even easier to just be outright useless. When we compare copper to every single resource in the game, it loses to every single one of them. Even Lapis Lazuli! And it's f***ing Lapis Lazuli! This is how Minecraft ended this story with a resource that is useless, unused at every point of the game, and ultimately doomed to be forgotten over time. So what can be done from all of this? I think the blockheads demonstrates exactly what needs to be done. Copper lacks recipes. There are only 3 recipes at the moment for copper and none of them are exactly useful. One of them is even ugly as fuck. Okay, copper blocks aren't actually that bad. But Mojang still needs to add new recipes to copper and make it more relevant in all phases of the game. Make it like iron. They already have a perfect resource to refer to themselves. Give players a reason to get it as a resource. Make players want it as a resource. And from then on, it's just letting the clock run its time. Letting copper slowly integrate into the family of resources, and slowly be accepted as one of the checkpoints of progress in a player's journey. But until they do that, copper will continue to be a failure, and Minecraft will continue to hold this loss over a copy of itself. It may sound like I'm complaining, and to some extent you'll be correct, but I should make it clear that I'm not making these videos because I want to yeet Minecraft off a cliff. 
for the phantoms make it really hard not to. I'm critical of Minecraft because I love the game and I want nothing but the best for it. I want to point out areas in Minecraft that they can improve on. I want to open discussions about certain aspects of the game and bridge the gap between we the community and Mojang the developers. And as Mojang continues on a mission in making Minecraft the most legendary game to ever exist, I want to be there to witness and document the history of my favourite game, one video at a time. So be sure to stick around and check out this video where I cover the infamous combat update. This video highlights where 1.9 became the most controversial update in history. I can't think of a better place to start than knowing what happened in Minecraft's most important update. So give it a watch and I'll see you there!